Welcome to the Prophecy Club. The minister today has been ministering for 26 years, a pastor for 10 years, a conference speaker, evangelist, author of two books, one DVD and one CD. He is a worshiper and praise and worship leader. He's an apostle having started three churches. He warns people and nations. He walks in the prophetic, gives personal prophecies, and today he's about to share with you many dreams two of which are about end-time vision, specifically the day of the Lord. Now we're going to go listen to the audio of the DVD by David Jones called Day of the Lord. But he giveth grace to the humble man. He giveth grace to the humble woman. Just the other day, I had a, uh, a woman face book me and said, Pastor David, I've seen you on its supernatural show. Oh, what a great uh, 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 witness of the, 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 uh, uh, the end of time, the day of the Lord. It really blessed me so. But I got a question for you. Now, this is her question. Is the Lord coming back in the pre-trip, <laughs> mid-trip, or the post-trip? I just got to know, Pastor David. Just tell me. You know what I told her? I told her the truth. I told her what God said. I didn't give her my opinion. God already prepared me for her. The Lord said, when you begin to give this warning to all mankind, your mantle is not to concern yourself. Is it pre-trip, mid-trip, or post-trip? He said, but you give them warning from me that they must be ready. No matter what season we are in, be ready. He's getting ready to crack the sky. All time is getting ready to stand still for God. What is the definition of God? Ruler of life, life giver. God will be who he said he is. Almighty, everlasting father, prince of peace. For the day of the Lord is at hand. Now I want to start. Give you a little testimony how God used me to warn people. I'll never forget I was in Atlanta and my pastor always told me, son, I know you love people, but you can't pick up everybody off the street. He said, because they can get in your car, blow your brains out and take your car. I said, yes, sir. But he ended it like this. But if God tell you to pick them up, pick them up. And I remember that. Here I'm driving in, in, in Atlanta. It's got steep hills. And I'm going. I'm just minding my own business. And I see a lady with long hair with groceries going up the steep hill. And the Lord come to me and he said, pick her up. And I said, hmm, I don't know that lady. I'm not picking that lady up. <laughs> See, I'm going to preach. I tell on myself why I miss God. I said, I'm not picking that lady. I passed a woman by. God came to me again with authority. He said, I said, pick her up. I said, oh, God, okay, Lord, forgive me, Lord. And I turned her car. On. And as I'm getting close to her, she was walking. She was looking out the corner of her eye. She's going like this. And, and I said, Lord, give me something to say to this lady. I want to start freaking out on me. I started running down. I said, ma'am. And she was like, what? I said, ma'am. I said, I'm going to the top of the hill. I can get right. She said, I don't ride with strangers. And then God starts speaking now. I say, ma'am, understand these are the last days and these are the last times and you have to be so careful. I say, but the Lord knows you're going in and you're coming out. There's nothing here from the Lord. She said, I believe I'll take that ride. <laughs> she got right in. I didn't ask her name. I didn't ask her where she was going. I say, ma'am, anybody can quit. Anybody can give up. Anybody can just throw their hands up. I say, but it take a real man, a real woman to keep going. She said, oh, my God, God must have sent you to me. I say, why you say that? She said, I don't wreck my car. I don't lost my job. I'm starting to do crack cocaine. I got this big lump on my breast. I'm thinking about killing myself. I say, ma'am, hold it, man. I say, ma'am, I know you don't know me and I don't know you. I say, God told me to pick you up. I say, I didn't even want to pick you up. I say, he told me to pick you up. I say, ma'am, where there's life, there's hope. And when I said it, I heard God because I got ears on the side of my head. And when I heard God, I almost start crying because I heard God speaking. And she said, oh, she threw her hands. And she said, and she looked at me. She said, I know it was something about you. Oh, my God, look at your face. Look at your face. And I'm like to this day, I don't know what she seen. She was like, look at your face. Look. And I led the lady to the Lord. Right. And I dropped her off at her apartment complex. Right. And I never cry. My father will always box a tough guy. He said, never cry. So I never cry. I just never cry. And all of a sudden, tears start coming down my face. Now, let me tell on myself again. Why was I crying? I was ashamed of myself because I didn't want to take time out with this woman. I didn't want to be obedient to the voice of God. Whatever God telling you to do in these last days, you better be about your father's business. You hear me? You better look. Delayed obedience is 
disobedience. And I begin to weep and I pull over and I said, oh, God, please forgive me, Lord, please. Here I am, didn't want to be bothered with this woman. Didn't even want to take. Here's your thing about going to blow her brains out. Warning always comes before destruction. I remember ministering on a Wednesday night. And uh, I never done this before in my life. And I was ministering. I stopped. I said, wait a minute. There's someone in this church here tonight. Hear me. This is your last call from God. I never said that to no anyone. I said, you in this church tonight too. This is your last call from God. After this night, the Lord will never come to you ever again. This is your last call. Answer the call of God. By this time, a, a beautiful Spanish lady way in the back of the church with hair down to here. Jumped up and said, it's me. I'm a backslider. And she come running to the front. Rededicated her life. That Friday, she was killed in a car accident. This thing is real, y'all. Too much is given. Much is required. <clears throat> gone. She was gone. She just made it in. <clears throat> I preached this message the day of the Lord in Houston, Texas. And there was an evangelist backslidden. Stop preaching. Just giving up. And I preached the message. And he came with another preacher. And after they left, everybody came to the Lord. He came repenting everything. And he left with this preacher after church. And he, looked, he said, now this is the exact word. He said, that Pastor David, he scared the hell out of me with that message. <laughs> the day of the Lord. That man started preaching the gospel. He got back in the saddle, started doing what he was called to do. Eight months later, he was dead. Wow. People saying, I got time. You think you got time. Our life is like a vapor, a bubble on the water. Boop, and we're gone. You know the saying you used to say, here today, gone tomorrow. Now it's here today, gone today. <laughs> the Bible say, after death, whoosh, the judgment. It's coming a time when all shall stand before the Lord and the book shall be opened. And if your name is not found written in the book of life, he's going to say, depart from me, ye work of iniquity, for I know you not. And some going to be cast out into the outer darkness where there should be gashing and gnashing of teeth. You don't hear this kind of preaching. No. Nobody don't want to talk about hell. Look, if it's in the Bible, we authorize preachers to talk about it, to preach about it, to teach about it, to warn all mankind that the day of the Lord is at hand. After I came out of the vision, I was invited to come preach a week revival in Louisiana, Baton Rouge, Louisiana. I went to go preach a week revival. Listen to me. Ended up preaching 21 days straight. Every night, twice on Sunday. The first night I began to preach about the day of the Lord. People started wailing and screaming, running to the altar. Grown men, football players, teenagers, young people running, screaming, wailing. Men say, oh, God, forgive me, Lord. Running. They heard God speaking through mortal flesh unto mankind. They knew God had put warning in my mouth. They know they wasn't in right standing with God. The pastor, mighty man of God, raised the dead. He said, have mercy on our souls. Threw his hands up. He ran to the altar. His wife ran to the altar. They fell on the The Lord said, you can stop preaching now. My conviction had failed. Everybody on their face. I'm the only one standing. I say, forget this. I fell on my face. <laughs> Shoot. People start coming every night. Boss, evangelists, prophets, evangelists, pr pastors, teachers, all five-fold ministry gifts start coming. They start coming from everywhere. They start coming. I make the altar call, the altar full. Every night, every night, everybody come. Every night, everybody come. Now, this is what got me. I made the altar call one night. Teenagers, everybody coming. But there was a little four-year-old little boy way in the back of the church. Here he comes swinging his little arms. Little four years old now, not 14, not 40. Four just coming. And I'm looking, I said, look at this little baby. And he come, and he came, and I said, and I got down, I said, son, I said, what do you want the Lord to do for you? He said, me won't be saved. I said, I couldn't take it, Daniel. I started crying. I said, oh, God. Oh, God. And I led him to the Lord. And I said, where is this little boy's parents? And he said, uh, uh, that, it, the man, he said, he said, that's my nephew. And he said, by the way, I didn't tell him to come up there. He came up there on his own. I didn't even know he was coming up there. The Bible said the day you hear my voice, 
harden not your heart. Why? You don't know if this is your last message you're going to hear tonight. If Uncle Fred could come back, Uncle Fred would do it all over again. He didn't know he only had one week before he go into judgment. It's the Lord's will that none should perish. But see, we must be warned. But God is looking for a man. And he's looking for a woman of God to stand in the gap and to hold up the bloodstained banner and to say, thus saith the Lord God, whether they were here or whether they will forbear, give them warning. Warning always comes before destruction. How should we be living in a state of readiness Matthew 24, 44. Therefore be ye also ready, for in such an hour as ye think not, the Son of Man cometh. Ready. Watching. We must be prepared. We can't be trying to get ready. We must be ready. Luke 12, 37. Blessed are those servants whom the Lord, when he cometh, shall find them watching. Not watching everybody else, but watching yourself. How you think. What's coming out of your mouth? Are you speaking death or are you speaking life? Watch yourself. Watch what get into your spirit. A lot of times you get something in your heart. It's hard to get that thing out of your heart. Guard your heart. It says, blessed are those servants whom the Lord, when he cometh, shall find watching. Verily I say unto you that he shall gird himself and make them to sit down to meet. And will come and will come forth and serve them. And if he shall come in the second watch and come in the third watch and find them so, blessed are those servants. God don't want us to be fearful. Oh, oh, but he do want us to be prepared. We'll be right back after this message. If there were a way that you could give someone something that was hard crusty, won't listen to the gospel, won't listen to you, won't listen to anything about Jesus. <laughs> Unfortunately, many of us have friends and neighbors and work with them, live with them all around them, but they won't listen to us. If there were a way that you could give them something that might break through to them, that might reach their heart, that might win them to Jesus, and if it cost you 10 bucks, is $10 worth a soul? I'm going to say that this DVD by David Jones called Day of the Lord may just well be that punch in their stomach to get them to receive Jesus, something that will shake them awake, something that will help them to see that they are in trouble and time is running out. We normally ask a donation of $30, as you know, for each one of our DVDs, but right now, because I want you to get this DVD, we're making it available for a gift of just $10. You can go to prophecyclub.com or call 785-266-1112. Prophecyclub.com, 785-266-1112. Day of the Lord by David Jones. Call today. It's time for the famous Prophecy Club Summer Blowout. You get six DVDs of your choice by calling 785-266-1112. Valued at $30 each, that's $180, all for a gift of just $100. Call 785-266-1112. Grab your cell phone, 785-266-1112. Not available on the internet. 785-266-1112. Six DVDs for a gift of $100. Call now. And now, back to the program. And will come forth and serve them. And if he shall come in the second watch and come in the third watch and find them so, blessed are those servants. God don't want us to be fearful. Oh, oh, but he do want us to be prepared. And this know that if the good man of the house had known in what hour the thief would come, he would have what? Watched and have not suffered his house to be broken through. Be ye therefore ready also for the son of man cometh at an hour when you think not. Then Peter said unto him, Lord, speakest thou this parable unto us or even to all? And the Lord said, Who then is that faithful and wise steward whom the Lord shall make ruler over his household to give them their portion of meat in due season? Blessed is that servant whom his Lord, when he cometh, shall find so doing. Of a truth I say unto you that he will make him ruler over all that he hath. Now listen to me, people. But if that servant Say in his heart, my Lord delayeth his coming and shall begin to beat the men servants and the maidens and eat and drink and be drunken. The Lord of that servant will come in a day when he looketh not for him 
and in the hour when he is not aware and will cut him asunder and will appoint him his portion with the unbelievers. This is talking about the servant of the Lord. And that servant, which knew his Lord will, did what? And prepared not himself. Neither did according to his will, shall be beaten with how many stripes? Many stripes. But he that knew it not, did commit things worthy of stripes, shall be beaten with a few stripes. For unto whomso Ever much is given of him shall be much required. And to whom men have committed much of him, they will ask the more. How should we be living? Always praying. We can't even take a break. You know why? The devil don't take no breaks. He don't go on no vacations. He's always on his post. Luke 18, 21 says, and he spoke and he spake a parable unto them to this end, that men ought to always pray and not to what? Faint. When you stop praying, you will backslide. When you stop praying, you will give up and give out and give in. When you stop praying, you'll lose your song. When you stop praying, you'll stop worshiping God. When you stop praying, you won't even come to the house of God. And you know the Bible says, forsake not to assemble yourself together. How should we be living? Vigilant and sober. First Thessalonians, First Thessalonians 5 and 2. For yourselves know perfectly... That the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. For when they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them. As a travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. But ye, brethren, are not in darkness, that that day should overtake you as a thief. Ye are all children of light and children of the day. We are not of the night, nor of darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep as do others, but let us what? Watch and be sober. For they that sleep, sleep in the night. And they that are be drunken are drunken in the night. But let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and of love and for a helmet the hope of salvation. Without faith it is impossible to please God. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he's a rewarder to them that diligently seek him. Faith is what pleases God. Doubt ties the hands of God in your life. God against offenses. Oh, I know I got to stop here. Matthew 24, 10. Then shall many, not two or three, then shall many be offended and betray one another and hate one another. Watch out for the spirit of offense. The disciples came to Jesus when he's on the Mount of Olives, and they begin to say, Lord, look at all these great buildings. Look at all these temples. And he said, there shall not be left one stone that shall not be cast down. And they came to him privately saying, tell us, what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? And he said, the first sign is, let no man deceive you. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. And ye shall hear wars and rumors of wars, and be ye not troubled, for the end is not yet. For nations shall rise against nations, and kingdoms against kingdoms. All these are the beginning of sorrow. And many shall be offended. When you are offended, get ready. Here come betrayal. Right after betrayal, here come the spirit of hatred. When people are offended and somebody have offended them and hurt them, the first thing they go, so discord among the brethren. Instead of going to that person and saying, you have hurt me when you said that. You hurt me. Oh, I'm so sorry. Will you please forgive me? No. Nope. Wrong thing. Nope. Wrong. You're supposed to forgive them. If your brother come to you and ask for forgiveness, you must forgive him. If they say, no, I won't forgive you, wash your hands of it. You've done your part. Look. If you don't forgive your brothers and sisters of their trespasses, the Lord said this, not me. Remember, I'm just a messenger boy. If you don't forgive your brothers and sisters of their trespasses, he say, neither will he forgive you of your trespasses. Common sense tells me your sin still remains. And the Bible say no unclean thing is going to heaven. When that trumpet sound, doo -doo, doo -doo, we shall be changed in a moment, in a twink of an eye. And you have unforgiveness in your heart, people are going to be being changed all around. You're going to be like... Oh, Lord, what about me? Too late. Unforgiveness. Offenses will stop you from here going back with the Lord. Get it out your heart. 
Run to the altar. Go to that man. Go to that woman. Whoever it is, your mother, your father, your husband, your ex-husband, your ex-wife, your boss, your co-worker. Go get that thing straight. Get that thing out of your heart so when the trumpet sound, you will be ready to go. It's going to be many church members left behind because of unforgiveness. Many church people that's been hurt by pastors, pastors hurt by church people, they refuse to forgive. They refuse to release them. Bitterness has rose in their heart, and their heart become harder as a rock. And when a preacher begins to preach, huh, let them come to me. Huh, let them ask me forgiveness. Huh, they did me wrong. The Bible says, show forth yourself a pattern unto good works. You go be the better man. You go be the better woman. You don't want nothing to get in your way when it's time to take off to be with God. Be quick to forgive. And when you stand praying, forgive. Why? Because when you pray and you have unforgiveness in your heart and you all offended, your prayers will go right to that ceiling and bounce right back down. God will not honor them. If ye have ought against any, that your Father also which is in heaven may forgive your trespasses. But if ye do not forgive, neither will your Father which is in heaven forgive your trespasses. Ah, oh, here's a good one right here. How should we be living? Loving others. Now, you know it's easy to love people that's telling you you the greatest. Oh, you the man. You the woman. Patting you on the back. Yeah, yeah. But what happened when they begin to talk about you like a wet junkyard dog? Talk about you like you stole something. You ain't stole nothing. Scandalizing your name. Talking about your kids. Oh, that's fighting words there, preacher. John 15 and 12. This is my commandment. Jesus speaking. That ye love one another, not according how they treat you. See, if you treat me good, I'll treat you good. You treat me bad, I'll treat you bad. Two wrongs never make a right. The Bible say overcome evil with good. Don't be overcome by evil. This is my commandment. That ye love one another as I have loved you. But Matthew 5, 44. But I say unto you, love your enemies. Is that what it says? Love your enemies? Bless them that curse you. Do good to them that hate you. And pray for them that despitefully use you and persecute you. And say all manner of evil against you falsely. For my name's sake. The Bible says turn around and woo, rejoice. Praise the Lord. I'm getting persecuted for your name's sake, Lord. When you come to church, come in the doors dancing. Praising God. Don't come in coming. I'm so mad I can't stand them. Oh, Lord. <laughs> I give you a testimony. I got hired on that when I got out to Marines. I, I got hired at this uh, steel work, doing steel work, climbing up these big beams, man. And, and, God, and, the, and, the, and the boss put me with this uh, guy named Gar. His name was Gar. He asked me my name. I told him and everything. So we started working. Next day, you know, he said, man, get on over here and get to work. He started talking to me, talking to me like I was his child. And, I, you know, I ain't been long, got out to Marines. And, you know, I still had some rough edges. I said, I went up to him. I said, hey, man, I was always taught to respect another man. Hey, man, I don't want to hear what you got to say. Let's get to work. Get to work. I said, Lord, I ain't praying no more. I'm finna hurt this man. And we, and we had those big old wrenches that we carry. I said, and then uh, it was uh, lunchtime. And so the boss came and got me and brought me downstairs. And so I was down to eat my lunch. And I couldn't even eat my lunch because I had butterflies in my stomach. And not because I was scared because I knew what I was getting ready to do when I go back up there. And I said this to God. I'm a, I was born again believer too. Tongue talking and everything. And I said, God, when I go back up there and that man start talking to me like I ain't nothing, I'm going to take this wrench and I'm going to hit him across the mouth with all my might. I said, you know me and you know I'll do it. Then I had a little New Testament in my uh, jacket and I, I pull it out and open it up to Hebrews 12:14. And I start reading it, and then this is what it said. Follow peace with all men, holiness without, which no man shall see the Lord. I said, and I start crying. Why? That was my first scripture my grandma taught me as a little boy. My Holy Ghost. I start, then I start being convicted. I said, Lord, oh, God, I don't want to hurt nobody no more. I'm not in the United States Marines. No, I say, God, I don't want to hurt people anymore. I say, God, please help me. I say, have mercy on me. And I said his name. 
And I said, the Bible said, bless them that persecute. I said, bless him, Lord. Show him that he's hurting me. He's offending me. Have mercy on his soul. And the boss said, let me go back up. And I was down there sorting out boats and everything. And he come right down to me. And the Lord, this is the honest God truth. I'm certain I'm both. And the Lord himself picks me up. And he comes right to me with us like this. What are you doing down here? And I, and I stood up. I said, Gar, I said, the Bible says it's better for a millstone to be tied about your neck and cast into the depths of the sea than mess with one of God's little ones. I said, that's all I'm going to say. He said, man, you don't said enough. And he walked away. And I said these words. Have mercy, my Lord. Don't kill him. I knew, don't ask me how I knew, I knew God was getting ready to pass judgment on that man. And I started praying for him. The next day he came in, the whole side of his face was swollen up. His eye was all closed in. And he came right to me. And he, he came, I said, God, what happened? He said, I oh, don't know, man, look at my face. He said, and it constantly hurts, man. And when he turned away, I didn't say, uh-huh, that's what you get, messing with a Christian. No, I didn't. The Bible says don't rejoice over your enemies now. Don't do that. I said, Lord, please take away the swelling. Now, check this out. Day before, I want to hit him upside the head. Now, I'm praying for him. Look, the Holy Ghost will help you love people. Well, you know we can't do it on our own. I started in the sea praying for him. And he came back to work the next day. All the swelling was down. And that man treated me like I was somebody. Now, from the Prophecy Club, some exciting opportunities for you. If there were a way that you could give someone something that was hard, crusty, won't listen to the gospel, won't listen to you, won't listen to anything about Jesus. Of course, unfortunately, many of us have friends and neighbors and work with them, live with them all around them, but they won't listen to us. If there were a way that you could give them something that might break through to them, that might reach their heart, that might win them to Jesus, and if it cost you 10 bucks, is $10 worth a soul? I'm going to say that this DVD by David Jones called Day of the Lord may just well be that punch in their stomach to get them to receive Jesus, something that will shake them awake, something that will help them to see that they are in trouble and time is running out. We normally ask a donation of $30, as you know, for each one of our DVDs, but right now, because I want you to get this DVD, we're making it available for a gift of just $10. You can go to prophecyclub.com or call 785-266-1112. Prophecyclub.com, 785-266-1112. Day of the Lord by David Jones. Call today. It's time for the famous Prophecy Club Summer Blowout. You get six DVDs of your choice by calling 785-266-1112. Valued at $30 each, that's $180, all for a gift of just $100. Call 785-266-1112. Grab your cell phone, 785-266-1112. Not available on the internet. 785-266-1112. Six DVDs for a gift of $100. Call now. It's the heavenly gift offer. Four DVDs, one book. I Was Dead for an Hour and 45 Minutes by Dean Braxton. Six Hours in Heaven by Henry Groover. I Died and Went to Heaven by Gary Wood, book and DVD, The Fourth Beast by Howard Pittman. Four of the very best testimonies I've ever heard from mighty men of God about what they saw when they went to heaven. Listen to hear some of the same experiences which will verify they truly went to heaven, and then listen to the additional things that you've never heard. Amid all the negativity of end-time Bible prophecy, guys, give yourself a break. Get some hope and encouragement. Order these four DVDs and one book. That's five items valued at $130, all for a heavenly gift of just $45. Order the heavenly gift offer now at prophecyclub.com or 785-266-1112. Order now.